I've now gotten some decent mileage in the SC Trainer V2 here. It's above 50 miles, maybe even above 60 miles. So I wanted to take some time to do a comparison to the Boston 12, which is a really interesting versus if we're thinking about plated training shoes out there because the SC Trainer V2 in my initial mile has had a really nice, relaxed, soft, plodding along character and the Boston 12 has been slotting in more as my fast, speedy workout shoe. So in this video, I'm gonna dive into all the details of these shoes, the midsole, upper, ride experience, durability, how it's been for me out there on those long runs, and I'll let you know which one of these is gonna be best for you based on your training, your goals, and your preferences. All right, guys, before we get into it today, I wanted to let you know about Supwell. So Supwell is the company that I have built from the ground up. You've heard me talking about the running shoe matcher tool. And yes, it's still there. It's right on Supwell. If you want to get matched with the shoe based on your goals and preferences, go ahead and go to runningshoematcher.com or the shoe matcher tab on Supwell. But you can also now find the best running shoe deals on Supwell right in the best deals tab every day. I update it. I scrape the web for the best running shoe deals. So we always have the lowest price. And if it's not the lowest price, you can email me or DM me and I'll get that link switched in there. And you can also find my top running shoe picks at Supwell in the Our Picks tab. So no matter what you're looking for, Supwell is the place to find your next running shoe and I'm always looking to make it better. So let me know your harshest criticism of the site and I'll do my darndest to improve it. All right guys, let's get into it. All right guys, so quick overview of the SC Trainer V2 first. This is New Balance's plated training shoe in the lineup. It has a full stack here of fuel cell foam, which is a super critical TPU and EVA blend. And then it also uses a full length carbon fiber plate in the midsole. This comes in in the nine ounce range and it retails for $180 US, although I got this one for $140. They're doing a pretty good sale, which you can find on Supwell. I'm linking to the site that has that deal. Now in this corner here, we have the Adidas Boston 12. This one comes in also in that nine ounce range, so super comparable to the New Balance, but the key difference is that the midsole setup is a dual foam construction. So on the bottom layer, we have a firmer standard EVA, and then top layer is a super critical TPEE, which is a little bit of a softer foam. And instead of going with a full length carbon fiber plate, what you're gonna get here are these glass fiber energy rods, but function the same as a plate, add some rigidity and structure to the platform. Now this one retails for $160. Last I checked, they had some sales for 110 in this colorway they're getting quite limited and i think almost all out so you're probably gonna have to pay msrp for the shoe right now at 160 but the way that adidas operates their business they cycle through colorways like none other so you will be able to get a good deal on this at some point in that 100 or 110 range just stay tuned for my weekend deal updates all right, guys, now diving into the midsole of these shoes, this is going to be the biggest point of difference between these. Because the SC Trainer V2 uses a 100% bed of this fuel cell foam, it has a much softer character underfoot than the Adidas Boston 12. So in the Boston 12 here, we have this Light Strike 2.0 underfoot. That's the white foam, and then the cream foam is the Light Strike Pro. The combination of these two is much firmer, and this shoe actually does require some break-in. The Boston 12 required maybe 50 to 70 miles before it really started singing to me and someone in the comments the other day asked me why would you get a shoe that beats you up for 50 miles and the answer is there are some trade-offs between durability and out-of-the-box comfort so the midsole on step-in feel of the SC Trainer V2 was extremely comfortable and so much so comfortable that one of our friends here on the channel said they actually use this as a commuter shoe right up there with the cloud surfer Boston 12 you would not use as a commuter shoe but the firmer foam is going to give you more durability in the longer term although the step-in is not going to be anywhere near as comfortable from that midsole Midsole than the SC Trainer V2. Now they both do have a plate, hence the reason I'm comparing them, I'm trying to figure out what's the best plated training shoe between these guys, right? But the plate setup in the Boston 12 are those energy rods, which ironically, even though it is a firmer ride feeling underfoot in the Boston 12, does have a little bit more flexibility. And so if you look at this, I can twist this platform pretty good. So when you're thinking about cornering, especially if you're a four foot striker, the Boston 12 has a lot of this lateral movement here. Now, SC Trainer V2 is gonna be less so. I can hardly flex this platform at all. So that's gonna be the benefit of the energy rods here. That's the reason why Adidas went with these energy rods in the first place. It's supposed to add a little bit more of a natural feeling to the shoe. Now, last thing on the midsole, Boston 12 stack is just a little bit lower than the SC Trainer V2. I can't really tell that much, especially because both of the forefoot stacks feel pretty good, but you are gonna get a more cushioned heel from that 40 millimeter stack in the SC Trainer V2. 
Now thinking about the ride experience, SC Trainer V2 is gonna be much softer underfoot, much more forgiving, and the Boston 12 is going to have a faster, snappier ride. Now some people have told me Boston 12 isn't a comfortable shoe, it doesn't work for them. I would say if you're not training for a marathon and if you don't consider yourself a fast runner or if you're not attempting to run fast in the shoe, it's likely not gonna work for you. That's where the SC Trainer V2 comes in. This has a much more relaxed character and the plate in here doesn't function to make you wanna run fast. It gives you just a little bit more energy return for those slow days. So for heel strikers as well, the ride of the SC Trainer V2 is a lot friendlier. When I land in the heel back here, it gives me a nice roll forward from this rocker and a pop off in my first run in the SC Trainer V2 because of this energy arc down here, it felt like a trampoline effect just bouncing me off. Now the Boston 12 does not feel like it has a trampoline effect in it. Matter of fact, it's a shoe where you really need to put a lot of force into it to get the most out of it. It's like running itself, right? The more you put in, the more you get out. So this is not a shoe that immediately feels rewarding. You gotta be running fast up on the forefoot to get the benefit from this foam. Now, when you are running with force, with strength, marathon pace or faster, Boston 12 does feel like a really nice shoe. This Light Strike Pro up in here sings. SC Trainer V2, when running fast, it can do the job, but it's gonna be a little bit of that swimming and foam feeling. Not too much, but I just wouldn't prefer to use this as an everyday workout shoe. So I actually did a 20 mile long run in the ST Trainer V2 where I threw in some marathon pace miles and it handled that remarkably well, a lot better than I was expecting. But thinking about the Boston 12, which I laced up a few days after and did a 13 mile tempo in it at around marathon pace, Boston 12 just takes the cake for faster running. This one just feels like it's giving me a little bit more back when I'm running fast versus is the SC Trainer V2, which might be sucking away a little bit of my energy. All right, guys, now I gotta go get some miles in and do a meeting. So, so far, I have about 250 miles on the Boston 12, and I have 70 miles on the SC Trainer V2. I've used the Boston 12 for every sort of run imaginable, from more relaxed runs to workouts going at sub six minute pace, to long runs with marathon pace, to steady long runs. And for the SC Trainer V2, I've used this mainly for longer runs, those 20 milers and then I've also done some warm-ups and cool downs in this shoot. So where the Boston 12 shines is for a faster efforts over the long haul. This is a true marathon training shoe, means it's meaning it's designed for pushing yourself, for pushing the pace over distance. Yes, you can use this for shorter efforts, for example, 400 meter repeats or 800 meter repeats, but there are better shoes on the market for that, like the Adidas Takumi Sen. I really love the Boston 12 for half marathon pace workouts, marathon pace workouts, and even 10K pace workouts, but when you're doing a lot of volume, that's where this really shines, because it still can pick up the pace while having some cushioning underfoot. SC Trainer V2 is a much more relaxed Relaxed feeling ride and this works well for longer efforts as well but when you aren't pushing the pace as much so in general Boston 12 is gonna be faster and firmer SC Trainer V2 is gonna be a little bit more relaxed and have a softer cushion underfoot. Now, neither of these are ground feel shoes and the plated trainer category in general doesn't really offer that. So they are gonna have a lot of protection for your joints. They don't beat up your body. Both of these feel my legs feeling relatively fresh after the run. Now we talk a lot about foot strike pattern and gait on this channel, G-A-I-T, not G-A-T-E. And if you have a lower cadence or more of a hard charging runner, the Boston 12 is really gonna reward that type of foot strike. The Light Strike Pro Foam feels really good when you put a lot of power down into it, so this is going to be best for that type of runner. ST Trainer V2, on the other hand, this one would work well for a shuffler or someone who's not slamming down into the foam. While the ST Trainer doesn't necessarily get mushy when putting a lot of force into it and running fast, I could see how a lighter, more efficient runner might be able to use this as a workout shoe. I've actually seen some lighter, more efficient runners using this as a workout shoe, while I wouldn't favor using the ST Trainer as a workout shoe as a more hard charging, aggressive style of runner. Now, if we think about heel striking versus forefoot striking in general, SC Trainer V2 is going to be better for heel striking, it has a much softer landing out here in the back, and this rocker has a nice gentle rolling along feeling, very similar to the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, but to me, this feels a lot more cushioned than that Speed 3. Boston 12, on the other hand, is going to feel much better for faster forefoot striking. That's why I don't love this shoe for warm up paces, for everyday running efforts. The heel of Light Strike 2.0 in the back here is a lot firmer than we see in the the SC Trainer V2. And while it does have some decent stability because of that firm foam, probably even a little bit better stability than the SC Trainer V2, it does make it a little bit blocky feeling when running slow and landing on the heel. So that's why I use this for running fast only. When I'm running closer up to the maiden forefoot, spending less time on the back of the platform, that's where the Boston 12 is going to do its best work.
Now, both of these are excellent for long runs. I've taken the Boston 12 to 20 miles max and the SC Turner V2 to 22 miles max. And at the end of those runs, both of these shoes felt great. SC Trainer, again, I'd go for more of those days where you don't really want to throw any fast pace in those runs. Then Boston 12, if you have a run where you're going to fast finish it, there might be no better training shoe on the market right now for that type of marathon training run than the Boston 12. All right guys, heading up to the upper and fit. The SC Trainer V2 has kind of an underwhelming upper. I set this in my full review of the shoe, but there's nothing that stands out about it. It's not super lightweight. It's Yes, it's relatively breathable, but nothing in it is really popping. It does feel a little bit cheap, which is weird for an $180 shoe, but the fit of it is good. It's pretty forgiving. It's not too tight, but overall nothing special about the SC Trainer V2's upper. Now the Boston 12 upper is really interesting because it is a starchier material, again, stiff, but it feels really well built. It feels super durable. And it's one of the best uppers to clean that I've ever had. Really weird quirk of this material here, but I've charged through super muddy passes. I've gone in the torrential downpour and the shoe gotten it absolutely wrecked. And this looks like a brand new shoe at 250 miles. I've washed it a few times just with water, not even any soap, and it looks as good as new. So that's one of the benefits to having this more resistant starchier upper. It's some sort of knit material. I really like it in terms of the performance of the shoe. Everything about the Boston 12, it just feels like a quality high built up shoe, even if that does mean you're gonna get a little bit of a firmer, more structured feel in the midsole foam and with the upper. Now the Boston 12 doesn't have much padding at all in the back here. You can see that the SC Trainer V2 is gonna have a lot more padding up here, a lot more comfort around the heel collar. And that is one of the areas on the Boston 12 that was a weakness for me in the first few runs. I had some issues with the heel lockdown. I've never had any issues with heel slipping in the SC Trainer V2. So that's something to note. You might want to use a little bit more of a cushioned sock for the Boston 12 and also just take your time lacing it a little bit more than you would with the typical shoe to make sure that you get the lockdown absolutely perfect before you go out there on the run. Now I have had some issues with the Boston 12 laces getting untied, particularly on a rainy day, which kind of defeats the benefit of it having this awesome outsole, which we'll talk about in a minute. But my guy Tim actually recommended getting a pair of laces from Amazon or one of your other shoes, just a softer pair of laces, switching them in here. I haven't done that because I like how these stock laces look, but if you do pick up the Boston 12, that might be a good option. Now, in terms of the midfoot and toe box, Boston 12 toe box runs a bit long. SC Trainer V2 is true to size. You might be able to get away with half sizing down in the Boston 12. And then midfoot is a tad narrow in the Boston 12, but nowhere near as narrow as a shoe like the Audi Zero SL. I found that Boston 12 fits pretty well for my foot, which tends to be on the average to wide side. And then SC Trainer V2 is very comfortable and forgiving. You could probably get away with the standard width of the shoe, even if you have a wide foot. All right, guys, heading down to the outsole here. Now, this is what they call a no contest. The Boston 12's outsole is just superior in every single way. You've got much more coverage on the front, much more coverage on the back. It's continental rubber versus New Balance's standard rubber, and the durability is just insane. So if you look at this down here, you can see the SC Trainer V2 only has 70 miles on it right now, and you can see I've already worn it flat, already starting to get some degradation of the foam on the inside here. And the Boston 12 looks pretty similar to the SC Trainer V2, if not in a little bit of better shape at 250 miles. So you can see here, we are starting to wear off some of the texture of the rubber, but that's pretty much it. The foam is getting a little bit dinged, but this is a standard EVA, so it's gonna be a little bit more durable, even if it gets dinged up, than this super critical TPU EVA blend. And the performance of this foam just keeps getting better and better. And then of course, if you've heard about Continental Rubber, you know the reputation is one of durability, but also superior traction, and that is true. I've gone through a ton of rainstorms with this Continental, and it's been absolutely fantastic out there. Now, I only have the SC Trainer V2 at 70 miles right now, so I'll have to do an update once I get it to 100 or maybe 200 miles to let you know how the foam feels. So far, it hasn't felt like it's breaking down at all, but only 70 miles. I know some runners have reported that it didn't last that long, but I haven't had that experience in the fuel cell foam before. My Rebel V3 is at 250 to 270 miles right now, and it feels pretty good still. It feels almost just as good as it did fresh out of the box. I've done some treadmill runs on it recently, and there isn't any decline in performance there. So I'm optimistic for the fuel cell and the SC Trainer V2 holding up, but I'll have to keep you updated on how it goes once we hit that 200 mile mark.
Now Boston 12 just keeps getting softer. It keeps breaking in a little bit more. It keeps feeling better. It seems like every single run that I do in the shoe, I'm planning on taking the shoe to the 400 mile club in 2024. I crown this the most durable marathon training shoe on the market. And until something else comes in my office that doesn't show anywhere on the outsole hardly at 250 miles, this is still going to have the crown. All right guys, last, who these shoes are best for. So if you want to push the pace, if you're training for a marathon and you want something that's gonna be fast but also protective, that is the Boston 12. This is an all around shoe that can handle any type of speed workout you throw at it. I prefer it for working sessions where you can do mile repeats or longer, but as I mentioned earlier, you can get away with doing 400s or 800s in the shoe. And of course, if you have some aerobic base building runs with strides, this can handle that really well. SC Trainer V2 is gonna be better for relaxing relaxed, longer effort. So again, if you're marathon training or you want something for long runs that is comfortable, but also has a little bit of pep in your step, that's gonna be this shoe right here. It can handle some pace pickups. It can do some sets of faster work, but there are much better shoes out there on the market. I actually think these two would make a great pair and I've been pairing them as my two plated trainers right now. I know not everybody who doesn't have a running shoe review company is gonna have two different plated training shoes on the market, but these are two that do work particularly well together. So fast and aggressive, is going to be Boston 12. Relaxed and comfortable is going to be SC Trainer V2. Now these are $20 apart in price. So SC Trainer V2 MSRP is 180. Boston 12 is 160. I believe the Boston 12 represents some of the best value on the market in the marathon training segment. But of course, not everybody appreciates a firmer ride and not everybody is going to want to break in a shoe for 50 to 70 miles until it can work for them. So if you want something that's going to feel good right out of the box and are willing to pay a premium, if you like a softer ride that is going to be the SC trainer V2. Boston 12 is definitely not for everyone and I've had multiple people buy it after hearing me talk about it and say they didn't love it. It felt a little bit too firm for them. So I'm warning you right now, if you don't want that faster, firmer ride, if you're not gonna be running aggressively in the shoe, do not get the Boston 12, go for the SC trainer V2 and you'll be much happier. Now, one last note here. I did want to address the differences between the SC Trainer V2 and V1. So if you've tried the V1 and liked it, you might not love the V2. I did not like the V1 at all. It felt like way too much cushion. It felt way too heavy for me. And V2 completely changed my mind. It's streamlined. It feels lighter on foot. It feels like a little bit less cushion. But with that, it's going to feel like a little bit less protective than V1 was. So if you appreciated that super max stack, you might want to look elsewhere for other max cushion training shoes that have a little bit more of that super protective feel. Mizuno is coming out with a trainer later this year that is going to be remarkably close to what the SC Trainer V1 was. So you could hold off for that or you could go with something like the A6 Gel Nimbus if you just want something super protective. But I think most people out there will really enjoy the ride of the SC Trainer V2. This is definitely a crowd pleasing type of shoe while the Boston 12 is more of an acquired taste. All right guys, so there you have it. That is the comparison between the Boston 12 SC Trainer V2. As always, thanks for watching. Leave your comments below and I'll be back tomorrow with another video.